Okay, this is the demonstration for casting and what we're going to do is a pepper grinder blank, some banksia, pine cone and chola cactus in this one and then we'll do some seed pods in this one because each of them have three different techniques and so hopefully I can teach you how to go. The first thing we need to do, this is just the, the mould we showed before which is basically just timber glued together with hot milk glue and what I've got is some supposedly some pieces of rosewood that's been sitting in the oven for the last couple of days it was already dry but I just want to make sure so it's now well and truly cracked it's temperature uh, it's moisture contents down about 10% I should imagine and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that you'll notice the edge is chamfered on one corner and that's so it misses the glue and that basically just sits in there nicely down to the bottom and holds in. Now what I'm going to do is put these bits of timber and you'll notice I've, I've cut the ends so they look like it's natural edge when you turn it and what I'm going to do is basically put them in there and that I will then glue in with some hot melt glue which is just here and that will keep it in place and it will also keep the bigger bit that's underneath from floating so we just leave that there and stick it in it doesn't take much glue as to sink from the main box you want to use lots of glue because you do not want it to leak just leave that to dry and cool down the whack, the, the glue that is because uh, that's the last thing I'm going to pour. It doesn't need pressure. Uh, apart, well, it does, but the pressure pot does not is not big enough for that. So what I'm going to do is a multiple pour. So I'll pour some in, and then after a while, I'll pour some more after it's got initial set. Because you don't want to pour more than about 300 ml at a time, otherwise too much heat is generated. You'll notice on the table here, I've got a a heated ultrasonic uh, cleaner. Um, you don't have to. Look, heat up the resin to about 25 degrees. What this does is heat the resin and vibrate it to get the bubbles out. Now I've had this in here for about 15 minutes now and you'll see the, the resin's nice and runny just the way I like it. So we're ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it in separate containers because I'm going to be playing with different colours. So we'll start with this one. And actually, start with that one. Better. What I'm, John has asked me to do a, a fluoro lime. Um, pine cone. Pine cone. So I'm going to do the banksia, the pine cone, and everything which would go under pressure using this lovely stuff. So what I've got is some Perlex powder. Uh, this is actually a, what they call a, a clear or transparent Perlex powder. Um, I can't remember what they call it, but I actually buy it in bulk from a makeup artist. So, and it's called JNI2022, whatever that is. Um, but it's basically, it's got a slight milky tinge to it. And uh, what I'm going to do is pour a bit of resin in here. It's nice and warm. Okay, a fair bit of resin. <laughs> now, probably a bit too much. You'll notice I'm not super accurate. Um, I'll work out what's near enough is good enough. I use ice cream sticks for most of my stirring. But I do buy these big ones when I'm using big containers. Again, off the eBay internet. How much of this stuff do you use? Look, the best way normally of Perlex is you pour a little bit in. Uh, my rule of thumb is for about 250 ml, which that is, about a tablespoonful, a level tablespoon. Um, but basically, what I do, so I'm going to add. 
that's about a tablespoon, near enough. And I mix that in, and if you're using coloured perlex, same process, mix it in until it's thoroughly mixed. There's no hardener or catalyst in this yet. But many people ask, well, how much of this stuff perlex do you throw in? And it does vary on the colour. Some you do need to use more. But the best way to test it is as you're stirring it, hold up your stick. Now if you're in a coating, that's what a pen's going to look like when it's finished. About that thick. It's about two mil thick, maybe a mil. And if it's covering your stick nicely, then you've got enough colour. If you can see the stick clearly through it, you don't have enough. So I'm looking at that going, that's pretty close. Okay, hold the stick up for a bit. You've got to click it fast because it's as yeah. it runs off. Okay, so now. So that's about right. Now that's, like I said, the transparent colour. So now I'm going to a dye to get the colour I need. Now, Perlex does come in nice bright green and all sorts of things. How many drops do you use? Yeah, well look, good question. I'm just going to pour this in and mix it until I like the look of it. That's how much I use. Looks like it's more a yellow than a green, but... That's because it's mixed with white, mate. <laughs> that's exactly right. But you can see there, that's yeah. nowhere near enough. So I'm going to keep on pouring it. These, again, if you want stuff like this, just type it into the internet. It looks like I'm adding a lot, but actually I'm adding it's very little. Drops, yeah. <clears throat> again, mix it till it's nice that's and cool. That's a translucent colour. It's, translucent. it's a translucent colour. There are solid pigments. Um, basically, if you look at what I've got, I've got various perlex colours that are in there, uh, and various solids, dyes, you name it, I've got it. So. I think it would be good for... Oh crap. Um, and I've got probably got another three containers inside. These days I buy it in bulk in a large container which is just spilt down there on the side. Can you pick up the big baking container? <laughs> Highly professional here this is. <laughs> this is how I buy my Perlex these days. It's, uh, I think that's about 10 grams. Um, but normally, look, your little Perlex bottles are fine. Um, you can use paint pigments. You can use all sorts of things. This is supposed to be a lime green, so I reckon we're getting pretty close. What do you reckon? A little, a little, a little bit, bit more? Because yeah. um, it's going to be pretty thin, as you said. My little bit's quite a bit, as usual. No, it's yeah. just guiding, isn't it? <laughs> no, you get So why would you use uh, white perlex instead of white? So I just want to be white. Because it, it'll still glitter, will it? It'll still it, glitter. This will glitter it. and swirl. Like you'll it, see it that dye. Nice. It will still swirl the colour. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. I use the, the clear thing. stuff. The white will turn it a cream colour. Yeah. Uh, whereas this clear, it still has a white tinge to it. So unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's very hard to get a red glitter. I'm actually trying some from would you believe a cake manufacturer in yeah. Europe yeah, who sells a food safe red product that looks like so you can eat that perlex yeah you can <laughs> eat it uh, they actually use it for decorating Christmas cakes so I've got that on the way and uh, if it's successful I'll post a link the guy will probably sell out before next Christmas because of all you casters out there but I reckon that's pretty good now for 250 ml of resin, you go, normally go up 2% of the activator, which is the methyl ethyl ketone peroxide, or MEC P. Uh, this stuff is dangerous shit. Uh, no joke, one drop in your eye, you're blind. No going back, there is no ifs or buts. Uh, you get that in your eye, kiss your sight goodbye. So, um, you should use these little darlings. These are 
uh, safety glasses, but a special goggle type, so nothing can come to the side or underneath or anything. So I'm just going to put that on, and I'm going to use my highly accurate and technical amount. I want this to go off quickly, so about that much. Yeah, sounds good. It should be for that amount. What is it? Five mil. And I think well, I put how, in about how much ten. You got in. In there? It's 250. 250. I think I've got about 6 or 7 drops in for the 30 mil. 30 mil, yeah. 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 So, so 60 mil, yeah. Now, with this product, what you do, for these particular casts, you pour some in. Oh, God, that's a lovely colour. And you fill up to about halfway. That's all. I hope I'm going to have enough for this resin. Yeah, you will. Should do it. Now what you do is you grab your products. These have been sanded round, the banksias, mm -hmm. and so they're a sloppy fit in the hole. And what I'm going to do, as you see that nice and sloppy, is I'm going to twist it round, moving it from side to side and slowly pushing it down. Just like that. And I grab another one, and again. What you're trying to do is get all the resin in those little nooks and crannies. Don't worry if the stuff doesn't ooze out the top. Not a problem, because you're going to pour some more in from the top. This is the advantage of my moulding moulds, is the there's actually a resin well from above. Okay. This one here, you use the solid bit to the bottom. Again, it helps with ensuring the air is not trapped. That's a pine cone I've just shoved in there. This is some chola cactus. Where do you get that from? From America. It's actually a plant. Uh, it comes all nice and dry. But it's basically the skeleton of the plant. Okay, so now I'm going to just pour some more in there. And yes, I use quite a bit. I want it to overflow because when the pressure goes on in the pot, yeah, yeah, it is a nice colour, isn't it? Yep. I reckon I've got too much. So <laughs> that, that's all right. That's that's yeah. fine. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is put my little plug holder over the top. And that holds the pieces down. I'll take these goggles off now. And what I'm going to do is put that in the bottom of the pot. Like that. Grab a bit of steel plate. And stick it on top. Now I've got some leftover resin there. So what I'm going to do is pour that leftover resin into my little leftover thing. What I'm going to do is basically stack these, these are cedar pods, stack them vertically. So that just happens to be the best way of making them look. I should have done this in advance. What I want to do is jam them in so they can't move. You don't want these little devils to float. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so there they are, jammed in so they can't move. There's not much resin in there. But what I might do is, I'll start that going. I might get a dual colour one going. Uh, second thoughts, no, I'll just add a little bit more. This is where you've got to be quick. To go off. So it's already starting to go off. Highly accurate. A 
lot of, a lot of this so-called inaccuracy is not as inaccurate as just that you've done it so many times. <laughs> you get to know like a lot of things. I've probably mixed up too much again. Oh no, that, that'll, that'll go. You'll see I'm not worrying about the air bubbles. It, it is what it is. Oh, it's a lovely green, isn't it? Mm. That's going to be... Paddy would love it. Pretty good for three blanks. That'll be almost perfect. Pressure those ones too? Yep. Okay. You don't always have to pressurize the next No, nah, that these sorts of things. With these ones you tend to twist them around, try and get it in because I'm just gonna put it like that. You'll notice a lot of people have their pots on mine has it elbow at the bottom. That's very important because I tend to be always in a hurry and I forget where it's at. It and I turn on full. And many a time where I've got something very close to the top of the pot, I find it's empty and all the resin's down the bottom of the pot. So that's where it's at. Now mine's an old cast iron, cast aluminium pot. And it does sometimes leak a bit. Again, opposite sides first. Sorry. We have the better be You pass us that hose. Oh no, is it there? Do it up tight as. Boom, on. <laughs> We're done. So that one's done, ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is these other seed pods. Now these ones, yeah, what colour are we going to do them in? These are actually she oak pods, collected from down the beach. Again, dried in the dehydrator overnight, or after drying for quite a few months in the, the room. Do you want to do a coppery colour? Like your way when I do it. colour, sounds good. Let's see if I've got one first. Yeah, yeah. Now that's that's pretty good. I don't mind because uh, again I'm only going to the blank size is up to the top of that layer so this is overfilled so that's pretty good. But what I want to do is I want to mix it in a decent sized jug. I might have to heat up some more resin actually. Um, what I'm going to do is that's going to take whoa, about another 250 or 200 mil, about that much. What I want to do is I want to start heating up some more for the big core. As you can see, I go through a fair bit of resin. Then I'll start that one heating up. He usually does all this when he comes home tired at night. He wants to relax from the day and he goes down to the shed. <laughs> so, so what I'm doing is I'm, <laughs> I've measured out the amount I want into the bigger container. You want a chocolate brown job. No, it's going to have to be a copper. I said copper. I said oh, you want, I thought you wanted the dark copper. No, no. Okay. No, light, light brown. Again, about a tablespoon. This one you will be able to see the stick. I think I'll get a fresh stick. I'll use a wide stick and this way you will be able to see what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, tilt it this way. Tilt. Right, so you can see that's a lovely copper colour. And when we lift up our stick, look at that beautiful coating. 
and you can't see the stick underneath. So that's what you want. Again, we go back to this. Yeah, I better do the right thing. Highly technical measuring. About that much. Can you grab another one of your pots? Because I'm going to actually use it. Yep, yep. Well, actually, I can, I can just pass it down, can't I? This pot here is leaking a bit, unfortunately. Okay, now what I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to pour. Ah, uh, damn, lost a few. So it's all right. That'll do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix these in. And what I'm doing here is trying to get them all nicely coated. Uh, don't worry about it, John. And uh, the holes at least wetted and up with the resin. Don't you know it? I bet you I'm going to run out of resin again. Looks a bit low, doesn't it? And I'm going to pour them in. And as you can see, I've got nowhere near enough resin. So, here we go again. Whoa, that's going to be way too much. Yeah. I swore that mould only took 250, but obviously my memory's gone. The ones that take 250 of those little ones over there. Uh, it's going to be pretty close actually. Poke, poke, poke them down and yep. level them off and we'll go close. Yeah, it's already above the blank size point. So most of this is going to get cut off anyway. And doing that under pressure it will shrink a bit though. Yep. Yeah. What I'm going to do. Plastic. What type of cloth are you using? That's just a, a simple washcloth. Uh, it's got air holes in it, so that's the important part. What not, I want to... not good for CA, these ones. <laughs> a paper brace. No! Cloth. Go straight through. And what this is is just a steel, a bit of steel plate. That'll just help hold those little darlings down. And John, can you put that in your bottle? Fire it up. Nothing else in that one? Okay. Now, what colour do you reckon we'll go with this? Gold would go well. Uh, there's a bright yellow. I might throw a little bit of fluoro in as well, just to make it fun. Hey, this sometimes happens. Okay, this has got about half a litre of resin, so no doubt we're going to have some leftovers. I may be pressuring up another pot with something else. <coughs> now, 
Now yeah, this one, this particular one, because we're pouring such a large amount, I'm going to do the mech a lot more accurately. Because the last thing you want is over cracking due to too much mech. And what I'll be suggesting is this will be down to about 1%. And that's all. And what I'm going to do is actually this can't fit in the pot, but we need some vibration. Normally I do it on my bandsaw table, but we can't do that today because the bandsaw is right at the back of the, the shed. So we're going to do it on our scroll saw table, just for something different. I've turned the blade round so I'm not going to cut through my mould. And that will give a nice vibration, which is what we need to get this going. So again, test the spoon, you've got a nice yellow coating, which is exactly what we want. But just to be different, I'm just going to add a little bit more oomph to the yellow with some fluor if it comes out. The water track on. This is going to be ultra bright yellow. Yeah, I don't know if it's making much difference to be honest. So. Yeah. Is that no pearlex in this one? It's already got pearlex yellow oh, okay. in it. Oh, okay. Okay, now we're it's nice and runny, which is good. What I'm going to do is move over. You can pass the tea towel over there. I just want to wipe the bottom. You do not want water and resin to mix. They do not go well. Nice yellow tea towel now. Okay. Okay. Oh. <coughs> One percent. Need about six mil. Nothing worse than pouring the resin in to find you haven't put the hard work. <laughs> Has been done before. Oh, I bet it's been done a few times. Okay, so we're mixing this up. Last one we've got a few different colours in your tray for a little bit. I've got a few at another one. I've got a few at another one. Okay. It's not going to need much. Not going to need much, no. You see why my pepper grinder blanks cost so much? A lot of resin. Now you see the vibration on that? Will lift all the bubbles. You put your hand on and feel it's vibrating nicely. When the wood's so dry, it'll be nice. <coughs> See how much that shrinks tonight? I will turn off the vibration once we have settled in and it's starting to gel. How long will that be? And it's still bubbling. So 20 minutes? Somewhere in there. It's, it's still bubbling. It'll probably be a little bit longer because it's less of a less of the MEK in there. Yes, but because there's more volume, it creates more heat and it actually goes off quicker. So, the more you have volume, you've got the faster yeah. it goes. What I'm using is the your breath actually explodes the, the bubbles that are up here. So what I'm doing is I'm just blowing on it. Normally use a straw is a good idea, but be careful with a straw that no spit comes out because then you're in real trouble. Quite a few bubbles coming to the yeah. surface. <laughs> What's impressive, it's pretty close to level. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so we're going to have some fun with this one. We're going to 
This is the mould we made earlier today, and John's already put it in the mould, and I'm going to take it out again, because what I tend to do with these babies is I paint the resin on over the top. This minimises how many bubbles you get. Because well, otherwise the bit underneath may not get as much good coating and sure as eggs you'll get a bubble forming underneath. So what I'm going to do is I've painted it with an old paintbrush just painted it on now I'm putting it back in the mould and using these plastic plugs squeeze that together these plugs probably aren't I hope that seals and what we do is we just pour the resin over the top like that and we're done <coughs> No need for pressure, nothing, just just like that, we're done. And we just leave it to set. Why the no, other one we're going to do... Why no pressure? Because there's no bubbles in that, and pressure will only reduce the size of the bubbles, it won't remove them anyway. Uh, vacuum it, what you want to do, but you can't vacuum a <coughs> blank like this because there's air in the tube. So we just leave it and set. Likewise with the copper setting, this one I'm, I'm very sure we don't have enough resin, <laughs> yeah, but again what I'm going to do with what I've got is paint the blank with resin. And what this does is it gives you a nice coating and gets, <coughs> avoids the bubble problem that you will have, especially with cables. Wire. <laughs> Inside, mate. Hang on. Bear with me. That's another carton. <laughs> Bloody mobile phones. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> the mozzies are coming and it's getting dark. I don't know. So there are. I've got that nice and coated. So the resin's sticking to it and coated. So what I'm going to do is put that in its mould like that and then I'll pour that resin in there and it's going to be nowhere near enough. I'll just go and mix up some more. Well that's good because we'd be just about ready for this one. 